I'd like to say that I appreciate the uh, perseverance of our of our guests tonight from Indianapolis and Fort Wayne and from Ohio, and particularly appreciate uh, Mr. Jurgler's uh, perseverance. He started out this morning in uh, in Seattle, Washington, and uh, with some difficulties in flights into Indianapolis and into Muncie, he's uh, finally here now. I doubt that uh, the airlines informed him that all the planes were coming in with about an inch of ice on the on the wings tonight. <laughs> Mr. Jurgler is a partner in Mitchell Jurgler Associates with offices in Philadelphia and New York City. He studied at the University of Rome in Italy and graduated summa cum laude. He obtained a Master of Science in Architecture from Columbia University, and he's a registered architect in Pennsylvania and also in Italy. He has been art director and architectural editor of Interiors and Industrial Design magazines, New York, 1952 to 59, he was a professor of architecture at the University of Pennsylvania, 1954 to 1966. He is now chairman, Division of Architecture, School of Architecture, Columbia University. He has been a visiting critic at uh, a number of universities around America. He belongs to the Italian Order of Architects the Pennsylvania Association of Architects and the American Institute of Architects. He is serving now and has been serving for several years as consultant to both the Philadelphia City Planning Commission and the Baltimore Planning Commission. He has won a number of, of awards, including the Ar Arnold Bruner Award in Architecture, National Institute of Arts and Letters, New York City in 1966, the Gold Medal of the Architectural Guild of Philadelphia, and he was the first award winner in the headquarters competition for the American Institute of Architects headquarters in Washington, D.C. He was a finalist in the Boston City Hall competition. It's quite an honor and a privilege for all of us to have you here tonight, Mr. Jurgle. Well, thank you very much. This uh, will wake us up, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> I had all the experience of technology since this morning, and uh, can you? Uh, and I found out that there is a very funny relationship. As you go farther, you start from a huge airplane, and then you reduce, reduce, reduce. And now, in Chicago, we had all sorts of. Uh, uh, negotiation about what kind of plane was available. Everybody was trying to push you in the, in the smallest and most expensive kind of airplane. And finally, we got into the one that was covered, uh, they didn't say covered with ice, and I didn't know about that for sure. <laughs> Otherwise, I would. Well, anyhow, <laughs> <laughs> I'm here and quite happy, and I thank you for your patience here to wait uh, for the great thing that I have to say. I don't know what kind. I feel I'm most compelled that I should bring some fantastic message. But really, I don't have any, any too much, except that uh, I'm going to show to you some of the work that uh, our firm has been involved. Not too many buildings, you will see, uh, built. But lots of project, ideas, tentative, and uh, few structure which start to come up. So we are sort of 
puzzle a little bit for everyone because we did very few buildings, as a matter of fact. We built very little, but we made a lots of cardboard architecture. So we are much <laughs> closer to students in a way. We, uh, and we are much closer, we hope, to you in, uh, in that kind of endeavor. However, I've been also involved in education all throughout my life, and as you know, now I am at Columbia as a chairman of the School of Architecture. And this takes, uh, especially recently, not only a great deal of time, which would be really the minor aspect of that, but uh, a great deal of uh, involvement, let's say, of my personal thinking about architecture in general. We have been through, a, as you are well aware, aware a process of uh, restarting program, uh, uh, mm, curriculums, and so forth in the recent uh, months, let's say. We had, after the famous uh, riot that Colombia went through in the, in the in the spring of last year, a, a period in which everybody uh, kept saying, I never learned so much in my life. <laughs> uh, on the other hand, <clears throat> uh, we should, uh, uh, we really learn probably, everybody learned out of the immediacy of a certain experience, let's say, uh, more than in any other moment in life, probably. And the other, I, I'm not saying that in urging you to, to imitate what happened over there, but uh, I think that this pushed us to revise some of the program, which we were already under uh, scrutiny, let's say, and uh, since I went at Columbia two years ago, uh, we started some kind of new curriculum with the participation of the student. The problem within the school really reflect uh, the problem of the, pro of the profession at large. <clears throat> yep, so I better take that. I think, uh, I think that technology today doesn't go together with me at all. <laughs> <laughs> and will be much better. Uh, what I was saying, at Columbia we started uh, uh, about two years ago to re revise curriculum. As you know, we are a graduate school, uh, which however gives a bachelor program, a bachelor degree, but that is the mystery of, of uh, the part of the mystery of this kind of uh, assignment. At any rate, we developed now a, a program of four years, which uh, is very fundamental in the question of the issues. And uh, it's not an adventurous program, very complicated in structure, let's say, not very scientific at all, but it's very direct, I hope, very much to the point of understanding the level of the human understanding, let's say, of all the problem of architecture. And therefore, is based on the issue of what arises and us as a matter of concern for everybody. Architecture uh, as a process of doing things, uh, a reinvestigation of all the studies of form and uh, uh, all the problems of form, and try to begin from the bottom scratch, let's say, from the scratch bottom, rather, that is this question of where are the issues, the recognition of the problem, and then from there step up to the programs, and from the programs to the design <coughs> and the project. It takes a long time, really, to, to find out how this program will work and what the result will be. However, this is an experimental program of which students and faculty all work very enthusiastically since the beginning of the year. And I hope that <coughs> too late we can have some report to make about that. I really, I mentioned to you because it's uh, part of our 
my personal concern, and it really mm, indicates how much the problem that we debate on this, in this school really reflects the problem of the architecture at large. <coughs> we have, in general, I would say, two, two attitudes to one of architectural problems nowadays, nowadays, and you are quite aware of that. One is the concern for the utilitarian aspect, I would say, the kind of straightforward solution. I'm not uh, thinking of as far as mega structure, let's say, but the kind of attitude to our design that implies a very kind of direct approach, let's say, without the concern and actually despite in a certain sense the concern with form and form making and proportion and all this kind of, 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 of setup. Uh, situation of, of depicting beauty as a system of support, proportion and so on. So one end there is this, 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 this kind of attitude of having architecture in its sort of utilitarian straightforward aspect. Let, let, uh, let me say, for instance, as an example, how could be, could be the architecture of, of of John Andrews, Sturgeon, or Campbell Nose, and so on, if you have, if you have the four buildings. And on the other, there is this third, just in the opposite of that, uh, there is this kind of uh, uh, sophisticated concern for form as a, 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 a most of the thing in itself. The thing that you know, <coughs> the only kind of uh, a uh, subtle kind of relationship between mind and surface and opening and enclosure and so on. Some protection. Uh, I would say both of the, uh, these aspects may be represented uh, uh, in this country very much by people like uh, uh, Robert Venturi, for instance. Uh, and some of the general kind of attitude that has been affecting in our architecture since quite a while, the concern for form in abstract. Well, I wouldn't uh, uh, attempt to, to advance an answer on that. Uh, what it seems that architecture seems to me at least, that architecture probably is changing uh, its source of inspiration or is, uh, uh, as the issue, let's say, that define architecture are changing very much. It was easy to say, it was possible uh, in the Renaissance to build a prince, a palace of a prince on top of slums or on top of, of poor houses, because in that time the palace was really the, the, the essence, the, you may say, of a certain aspiration to life of the people, in a way. Every, the palace was the city, everybody uh, aspired to be in the palace, and the palace uh, symbolized very strongly this kind of aspiration. But to build a palace today doesn't make too much sense, and uh, actually it would be very hard to work of, to make really work of art out of this kind of premise. That is why so much of our architecture today, it seems to our eyes almost irrelevant. Because probably it doesn't hit, it doesn't, it's not comprehended with these, with these issues which are really pertinent to our own time, that can clearly define what are our aspirations as a society as a whole. And therefore, there doesn't bring any result, even from a standpoint of pure form. So the search for form again is a search of content, I may say. And unless somehow the subject is there, the issue is there very strongly, very vital for our time, the form probably doesn't, uh, uh, it's, it's become irrelevant. No, so you can't even discuss. You can't say if it's right or wrong. It's probably 
He picked up the nature stuff. In fact, we are much more bound to look uh, at architecture as a, as a process of being in the trade, the architecture of the school, the architecture of the uh, housing, uh, of uh, especially the one that involved this problem of the human fitness, you know, the, of the habitat, but the edge scale in which we have to cope nowadays, the urban region and so on. So, uh, the, this may bring another thought uh, in relation, maybe this rapport between the past and the, uh, uh, the issues of nowadays, is that uh, for a long time, the nature has been the sort of fixed element to which that art imitates as much as possible. And in architecture, too, in other words, the parameter or the model of art and architecture in the past has been always nature with this sort of fixed uh, situation uh, which uh, brought this idea that all manifestation also could be as eternal as nature. And in a way, then, you can build out of this consideration uh, a, a, a very strong system of relationship in which nature is always the parameter. And this is true for all the architecture of the past, including the Gothic and the Renaissance, as you well know, in which uh, actually the Renaissance was so involved with the imitation of nature that they always justified many aspects of the architecture by saying, oh, look, uh, the proportion of the column is so many, let's say, 60, six, six times or eight times or 11 times the base, as well as the proportion of men is related to the feet and how many feet is high and so on. There was always this, the attempt to see the column and the capture and the relationship of the tree and the branches and the leaves of so so There was always this kind of parameter of this model that was nature. But when, after the Industrial Revolution, let's say, uh, rather than nature, uh, society became uh, the model, society as a whole, then you have to deal with something that could not be more fixed. It could be taken as, as a comparison or a parameter to make measurements and so on and so forth. But you have something that is <coughs> changing all the time, very fluid society. Not only changing all the time, but anybody can change it. Anybody that set up or is able to stimulate uh, new ideas and so on may even change society in the right or in the wrong way. So that we we have now as a model, and this could be said quite uh, accurately as a matter of fact, more and more society became the model of our doing in architecture and in art, uh, even art assumed the most abstract form, and probably because of that. And therefore, we have to deal with this shifting element that keeps changing all the time. So, I do believe, though, that we have a, an instrument <coughs> in, uh, which could work with these plans, but at least we have to work in finding an effective one. And, uh, this seems to be the idea of the project as a whole in architecture. In other words, uh, instead of thinking of the building as a result of the uh, sitting down and collecting all the data, and then the personal output is become more and more a rare thing, but become much more important for an architect the participation in what we call in general the project. Now, the idea of the project is 
is very familiar to anyone that has been working in planning and, uh, and to anyone that has been working outside and how, I'm not talking about teamwork here, I'm, think, I'm thinking all the efforts that, that, that eventually produce something which is not very well finished, let's say, it's never finished in a way. But it's the beginning of, uh, of, uh, of certain physical uh, result, which will extend in time according to possible changing that the environment will have. This idea of the project seems to me crucial because uh, this, you know, now we have many uh, reactions even against the project. We say that the project is too much a fixed, determined thing, something, a goal that you have to, you have to achieve. And, uh, and really we shouldn't uh, think too much on the term of fixed goal. We should start something and keep changing and develop as we go along. But the project idea means something more. It means that probably the rightness or the aesthetic value of anything that we do rather, how to make, uh, let's say, an environment that fits men, uh, where people feel at home, where men, essentially as an individual and as a group, feel at home. That, that is what architecture is all about. I don't think that you have to uh, claim a mirror anymore with a sophisticated intellectual idea. What you need is some place where people feel at home. Well, through the idea of the project, all the constant comes into it. The project should have, should have the right intention. And we could start in the, could, couldn't start with, with the nebulous intention or wrong intention. It should have the right intention. One should know why is that necessary. Why do we want that project? What that means? Then you should have all the possible analysis made in the proper way, in the comprehensive way, always having this objective of the intention very clear. And eventually all the possible uh, uh, coming in the same ground, say, or all sorts of knowledge and discipline and understanding and so on. And through this possible a uh, rapport between these, these uh, various um, participations so to the project. Pilates is there, let's say, in the, in the right structuring of all this kind of participation that we are uh, uh, experiencing a, a, a true and meaningful aesthetic experience. Our experience in the future though, will be nothing more if one was staying in contemplation in front of sand. In fact, that, that was the characteristic of nature. You know, nature brought contemplation. I mean, you, can't, you can stay and think and contemplate nature. But the manifestation of a society, let's say, the fluid changing, moving, uh, 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 transforming as aspiration, let's say, I'm not the subject. Uh, I feel action. In other words, I'm not subject to my contemplation. Uh, action. And therefore, uh, it seems that within the project, you can really comprehend this action as an, and as the action is really good, like a good football game. So then you have an aesthetic experience. Uh, if you only think uh, of what happened uh, with, uh, uh, even in viewing uh, Painting. Nobody thinks anymore of saying, uh, of taking a painting and just doing a contemplation of it. You really, what you do when you look at painting, you leave the life of a, of a painter or somebody that comes and communicates with you, not in one day, but through seeing him every, every, every year, to be up the ups of a few months in an exhibit, in another thing, in a number of things. That's really to make it to a contact with you. He will show you things for, uh, you show 10, 15 things at once. Then the next time it will be only one. But 
it is not the one thinking that counts, but all his life and all his expressive life that starts to communicate with you in this continuous action. So it seems to me that, well, always when you talk, the world seems much more coherent than what it is, <laughs> in a way. But it seems that out of that, uh, it's possible to detect some kind of coherent development of, of an aesthetic attitude, let's say, of an aesthetic experience. Now, uh, well, I don't want to get too close. Somebody gave me a problem here to say we fly harder. Uh, <laughs> this was in relation with my family. I fly. I don't want to fly harder here again, but I may also fall harder. <laughs> I uh, didn't have the fortune, really, in receiving commissions uh, in architecture to uh, I enjoyed very much any kind of commission that came. I think it was an architect should be uh, taken by the idea of of making something that doesn't exist or never existed before. Wherever, where is a, a chicken in a, a house or, 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 a, or a wasp or, or the White House, wherever it is. And I think that there should be limitation. However, the subject to which we have been treated most of the time has been subject to really without to another century, the problem of the uh, AIA competition was here, the powers, real powers, that maybe an architect of the Renaissance would have done much better. But only recently we started to receive commission that uh, to me uh, uh, makes sense at uh, schools and, and, uh, and uh, um, housing. I, I, I will show to you some of this beginning of this condition because the projects are not yet finished. But I will start then to, to show these slides and we can go through the work and after that uh, we can have some questions and uh, we will respond. Um, I think that you don't want to, it's quite late, so. Uh, Shall we start with this? Uh, we uh, started to work in Philadelphia. Uh, and our firm still is there. Uh, and it's divided between New York and Philadelphia in a way. <coughs> this is a building that we completed so very early in the game. Uh, in 1960, 1950, 1960, yes. I show over here because it's related with something that came much later. As you see, we started to do a, this building, which is an office building. Actually, it's the American, it's called the American Center of Insurance Education. And this is only one portion. It's a large campus now. It's become. And uh, at that time, we were concerned with uh, establishing a rapport between things that kept growing and, 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 and didn't have any, uh, wasn't really impossible, wasn't possible to say where they should finish. So that we devised uh, in this uh, system of, uh, of uh, loft space, let's say, supported by this large element of window in precast uh, concrete, which were also structural. And, uh, and this being a lot of space was interrupted by nodes of structure and brick. You know, for this, uh, for you maybe this is now is old stuff. But uh, when, <laughs> when it was done at that time, it, uh, it, it was the beginning of the possibility of creating continuity. In fact, by moving the position of of this uh, lot space uh, is, was possible also to establish continuity with other elements. In fact, uh, we went elaborating this, and the next 
the next, uh, after two years, uh, the, uh, actually two years ago, uh, after two years, and exactly last year, the owner came back with the proposal of, of planning the old campus of this institution. The building that we started uh, here with the David intention, let's say, the great uh, hope of only extending this thing as a sort of a continuous structure throughout the campus, just didn't go in that way. It's one of those things that uh, prove how our imagination really is frail in this sense. Uh, that the client rather prepared to to develop then the old campus in a different way. Uh, as you see, nobody really could foresee the, the exact development of this thing. Uh, and uh, eventually, it, it was decided the client acquired a larger piece of land, and, uh, and therefore, this old campus has been defined. In architecture, you always have to have uh, a client, and by client, I mean uh, not necessarily a patron or something like that. But for me, the client is the society at large. Architecture, and that may sound bad, but it's always a 50 50 proposition. In other words, architecture doesn't exist unless, as a social concern, unless that there is the will to make architecture. And uh, we definitely we have a will, but uh, we need a will much stronger, much more encompassing than ours. And uh, this is the will of the society or the client at, up, at large. So that you see that, and in that sense, there is a, a wonderful aspect in this kind of activity that makes our work so unique, let's say, so different so unprofessional in a way, you know, somewhat much more than professional because it involves really the, the, the strength and the will of making a place by a lots of people around you and all the responsibilities that are involved in that you become, you know, wages are, 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 are conditioned to what you do, wages of the people that are going to work over there, the timing and all that. So they become a really, uh, what should I say, a, 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 a group effort, uh, where the, the more there is a, a structure of rapport between the various elements, the more you have a greatness in architecture. Well, the campus had a big value here at this point, so we propose to extend quite to get hold of all this ridge that was represented in this valley here. See, the land is flat at this point and then falls down. And rather than concentrate then in a big structure over here, we decided we could define three, actually four elements over here, which because of the aspect of this open space that we intended to leave open, they start to establish a sort of contact between each other, a kind of conversation, let's say, between facing each other. Because, as you know, when you start to open a window, you start to look into something. And therefore, when you look into something, you are bound to do things, and to design things in relation of being seen from a certain form. I just showed this side plan, which uh, shows here some residential and classroom, uh, a, a residential restaurant and classroom uh, areas in a long mall which overlook this valley over here. A node at this point, and then the present campus, uh, let's say, of, with these two buildings that have been added later after that photograph has been taken. An old existing garage that was over here and another kind of group of service and uh, institutes in this position over here. And we concentrate as much as we could the car in this location, which is close to a railroad car, and is the a two or three stories parking garage. In other words, we convinced to budget into this 
uh, this uh, time, a structure of parking which allowed us to maintain much more of green space than <laughs> occupy everything by car. And as you see, there are only temporary blocks which are related to the single building. But most of the long term, let's say, parking will be in a structure, and we find it was convenient to spend those money, let's say, here rather than destroy the great deal of this land. The thing that you look across this low lake are three buildings, a library, a service building, and uh, another of these uh, uh, laboratories, uh, which assume a physiognomy of their own. They will, build, they will be built in different periods of time. And you, know, and, and, and you never know, really, and it's, and, and it's almost impossible to detect which, in which time they will be done. So many times, this chain of buildings, the string that looks so wonderful sometimes, the model and the plan, the pseudo or reduced megastructure, okay, really are always left with an indefinite kind of condition. And uh, that doesn't mean that you cannot occupy the ground in that way, but uh, it's probably true that it's also possible to occupy the land with something that defines a certain uh, space around. I don't know. Next, please. <coughs> the, this is a sketch which shows uh, the position of this laboratory and this uphill with the building that you saw before, you saw before in the photograph. Next. Uh, for that, uh, uh, my major concern was to show to you that when it's not clear, let's say, the kind of development that a site will have, it's still possible to define certain area where the building will grow, and, uh, and um, as an exchange, as a conversation between themselves, they will define a total space. But here uh, is a parking garage that we built for the University of Pennsylvania, and now we became, after that, expert in parking garage. We got all sorts of goodies and prizes and uh, <laughs> <laughs> After At least you should hope that it never happened to you, because after, otherwise you do parking garage for all your life. You are <laughs> Just coming out now, that kind of uh, bag. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, the idea of this parking was uh, uh, it is a very preeminent position of the campus. This actually is the Drexel Institute on this side. There was an open <coughs> space. And uh, uh, this is a parking garage which has split level. Uh, in other words, there, there are it, there is a group of deck in this side and a group of deck in the other side. And they are only five feet apart so that in height, so that it's possible, as you know, to, and it's one of the most economic type of parking area without big complex structural frame, uh, where you can go very easily from one deck to another and you go across the parking area like in the street. It's very inexpensive type of parking and which doesn't show the muscles, so let's say, all the time. However, on this side, we decide to cover this ramp to protect the ramp from the rain and the ice and uh, to a certain degree, fill the ice goes <laughs> into this hole and with some complaint that is so little that car here, you cannot uh, do any harm. And uh, with that defines somehow the space of this uh, 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 sort of uh, recess on uh, World of Street. Right. <coughs> uh, this shows probably more clearly how this structure is intended. There is here, you see, walls which enclose the ramps going up with light, the natural light, always coming from one side, so that it is established establish some kind of direction into going up. You never see an open uh, window. Uh, 
when you drive, so the device is always controlled for the device. And uh, this is a big wall which, uh, which defines the, the structure of the deck and has this particular structure that is supposed to go up other two stories when uh, will be completed and become a sort of big truss encompassing the whole thing. There is a change in, in the language of this building over here, and that's because in the future, you see, the street that you see over here, this point, will reach this level, and therefore will be possible to enter the garage also in this point. And those are aspects that you always have to take into account of making <coughs> a structure feasible. This is poured in place concrete, and we use the metal form, uh, which are usually used for foundation and, uh, and dams. And we found that if you design the old thing, you can use very well this type of, I mean, you have to design all the form that is possible to use all these kind of, uh, of form. Next, please. But after that, as I told you before, uh, we were commissioned for a, this was a 350-car garage, and this now is 650-car garage. Next time will be 800. I'm not joking, it's true. We, we have been asked to design a, 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 an 800-car garage, and then after that, a 10,000-car garage. How about that? <laughs> but I hope we will never get that. 10,000, which is for an airport and it's quite a gigantic proposition. Well, the system that we adopt, we adopted here the same principle. In other words, and this is the beginning of cardboard architecture, but it's, uh, it's based on the fact that in the end, again, there are the curves. This time there are no ramps here. The ramps are inside but they are turning into this curve, uh, so the leather turns into this curve. And uh, we decide we have, this is facing the big stadium, as you will see from the next slide, with large arches. So we intend with this big opening to somehow work with the scale that the stadium already uh, established inside. Elevator and stair are enclosed by glass, and, uh, and, uh, and there is this entrance, let's say, in the place where you enter uh, into the garage. This uh, slab here, which uh, uh, reduced somehow the scale of the, of the people, let's say, and they approach this, this surface. This is brick. We want it to be concrete, but this is one of the idiosyncrasies of the university uh, that like bricks. <laughs> <laughs> so we went along. On the other hand, the brick, you know, uh, brick is a uh, material that really gives the uh, great unity to a surface. That's because from a distance you don't read anymore the small module of the brick, but you have an impression of the of the solid surface, so it acts as, as a core. This time we use a system of precast concrete, all uh, prefabricated and, uh, and uh, post-tension. Uh, the column are post-tension along this line. These beams are locking into this particular position, these beams, and they are also post-tension in this direction. Now, this structure here, you see, uh, <coughs> acts as a sort of framework. It's like a wall. It becomes rigid like, like a, a, a wall. The opening, let's say, are irrelevant, in a sense, within this structure. And this supports the tray, you see, over here. There are plunge beams that you will see more in detail over here. The head of the plunge beam coming here. And support this sort of a tray, which is the, the part of the stock for the car that heads into this position. For some reason, uh, university 
spun up uh, very precisely when the university department space, that would be, at least according to uh, Pennsylvania, they have to be a 90 degree because, and also the floor shouldn't be sloping because apparently a great percentage of the students leave the car without brakes and it is <laughs> the, the floor slopes and the car piles up in front of the big car. Uh, but the 45 degree is really more dangerous because you don't see very well the car when it backs up. Instead, the 90 degree is more uh, visible. Right. This shows the building under construction. Here you see the beginning of this. The system is in the center, starts with a kind of key of column and prefabricated element here, and then to, to this there is added another element. This is the element of column, which has this sort of box, a kind of, uh, of uh, interlocking kind of element where the other beams come in and these lines are sitting. Into. In fact, the time that uh, here you see in detail, or one of these elements of the here, will be uh, place where the post tension is perfect. Actually, here you see in detail how the connection of this part is made so that the beam uh, uh, comes and sits into the design plate. The slight form that this receives is just what you need in terms of the compression element in that particular coin. We had all sorts of designs for this knock, let's say, uh, and eventually we limit to the pure economy of the material, let's say, that when it comes, when you pour it in place, the need of, uh, of material is so much and is so uh, uh, the rapport between the steel and, and the concrete, let's say, is, is, is much different than the one in the post tension element. So, where you try to really reach a tremendous amount of lightness and reduction in weight. We decide also in this connection to leave open this uh, element of the beam sits in this fashion of the here. So, we leave is got through, which is uh, describing in the building. The building is not finished. Here you see, uh, again, the element of the column, the rods and the, where the other column will fit on top, the two beams. And uh, in the back, the head of the two, and the beginning of this parapet, so you see a sitting on top of it, there, which will uh, make the, the final deck. <coughs> Those are all other process of erection. It took uh, less time to build all these parts that have been fabricated than the part that has been poured in place, which has been done in that way because of the uh, of the uh, kind of different scale of the old thing has. So in other words, when you start to make curves, you start to work with cord in place, there is a different morphology, uh, a different language altogether. The curve here are suggested not as a fancy form, let's say, although they may appear in a certain moment like that, but it's because they really indicate a total different technique in defining something that has to fit a certain speci specific function of turning around or getting up with the elevator or having a stair. Instead, the part that is big span, let's say, lost its space, let's say, then is done with this uh, precast element and all industrialized. And of course, the uh, criticism here has been that uh, there is a great difference between this element and this element, and, and you know everybody tried to see a unity of the building as such. I I I became a sort of uh, 
less than certain this time. And I, I don't know if I mean I, I will not uh, I will let you judge, but I do think that uh, our building, let's say, uh, shouldn't try to to seek for a synthesis that is purely formal. Uh, I mean, who? I mean, after all, they they encompass different function within one particular. <coughs> You may leave one part of it and, uh, and uh, never know the whole uh, uh, environment, uh, like happening in dormitories and in uh, shopping centers and so on. So that uh, really the beginning actually of merging with other structures beside and near the building itself is, is comes from the fact that you have this part of the building acquire a description or a language according to your own function. This, of course, this is not so to be here and over there. And there is a black surface which really will make more justice to your system. <coughs> this is an interesting picture of, because it shows the rapport with the stadium. You see, the stadium is the spiritual design stadium. And uh, somehow this space and Marvin knows pretty well the place, so you, you can have a pretty good idea. You see, this is where the spruce trees, uh, the spruce trees come in, and there is the arcade of the stadium going in this direction. And there was always this curve that never had any definition architecture, and now it starts to be. I mean, this is not only a clever <coughs> photograph, it is, it's, there is one particular point which you see in this way. However, the sense always of this space is started to become more defined. And everybody found out, for instance, that there was this trap in the building. You know, nobody observed that was something that never existed. And all of a sudden now I had the dean going there and say, Oh, look, there is a crack over here. <laughs> <laughs> And then the space wasn't architecturally defined. Next. Well, we did uh, several competitions. Uh, uh, and we have a good scar out of it. But, and it's very important that every architect really participates to, to them. And uh, you think that competition is great, and you have to. Uh, you are free, you know, in that moment. And you found out later that you are not, but anyhow, uh, you try. And uh, uh, the, somehow the problem comes to you not from one or two persons, but from uh, a desire not to make the environment. This is, is a project for the uh, Boston Five, one of these uh, very modest uh, Boston banks, uh, which, however, have, I don't know, two, three hundred uh, small uh, offices all around the town. And uh, they, uh, this is a particular delicate spot in Boston, which is on Washington Street and leads to the city hall, and this is Schoolhouse Lane. Lane. Uh, the planner had uh, the urban plan, you can see it had uh, a demolition in this particular point and uh, a substitution to the street, and, uh, which was designed and was one of the limits of the competition by the planner to this particular point. Uh, we found out that uh, you know, the planners they always make everything like a, a curve of an, an automobile so that. Everything should be a curve. In fact, the property line was a curve, and a, cur a curve of 40 feet diameter so that everything goes forward in the car. So we reacted against that, and we say if a man comes down from uh, uh, um, schoolhouse lane and, and see the church which is facing on this side, he should have the same instance that he has in the shops in front of it here. In walking through a series of episodes, look to bank inside, through window that could show something. And in other words, there is a kind of 
of, of a reduction in scale at the level of the cholesterol at this point, while the light penetrates into the large hole in this particular position, and there are two or three of these levels on top. <coughs> uh, the bank didn't like very much, didn't appreciate this subtle kind of approach. And instead, uh, they, they wanted a big monumental uh, entry into the temple, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we lost the, 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 the thing. It was a close position. And uh, next. But we went through, you see, this is a view from the top. Those are all the colonial structures over here. And here we build shops, a little square to rest for a moment before taking courage to go across the street, you know, <laughs> <laughs> under the trees and so on. And this is the actual plan of, uh, uh, of the building, which is a triangle, which somehow cover up the triangle of this square. A square is defined, it's a small square, so there has to be geometrically clearly defined. The church uh, uh, is over here, uh, and uh, Washington Street goes in this direction. So that when you look up, you have a precise definition of this aspect. Next, please. In fact, uh, we made a drawing, which just didn't convince anyone, that that was an attempt, you see, to show this, the space at the street level with all this profile, with in and out, that's uh, the element over here. The space at the mezzanine level, when you are inside the bank and you see, let's say, somehow, through this open glass, much more, let's say, in terms of understanding of this space. And the space at the office level, that is at the eve of the roof, where you have much more defined this triangular aspect of the square. <coughs> and if you want the more confirmation you have of that, you just look at some of the, the very clearly defined spaces in Boston, you know, through the uh, uh, kind of ease of the um, buildings themselves. Uh, this, this was my project. I mean, that was the classic project in which I got involved for, I, I, I worked with the planning commission in Philadelphia for about six years, and, uh, and a great deal of them, at least three years, were taken by this particular project, which is uh, the connection between City Hall and the, in the Independence Hall on Market Street, which is a major Arteries of the city. I mean, rather than arteries, it's a major shopping area, let's say. And the problem was the connection between the east, I mean, the north and the south of it here, uh, and yet the servicing of the particular area of the habitation. But the project, you see, worked in this way, in which a great deal of economic study were done, or analysis, and so on. And so on. And eventually, within the planning commission, we, we, we define a certain attitude of, towards the design of this place. Attitude was approved by the city and eventually became the standard on which competitors later came in and, uh, and uh, but they had to adopt the same kind of principle because it was already placed in the program of this is the true experience of the city planning commission. So uh, eventually after that, after this was approved by the city, in which I show you only a, a final a sketch, let's say, uh, SRM is doing now the final, they always do the final thing, but they are doing the final uh, solution. But it's based on the same principle, and the principle here is to find a connection between a commuter station in this place, a subway station under Market Street, and eventually the connection of these two elements into a concourse, which had on the left here 
a man by an apartment store, not no more than two or three stories high, as they like to hang, let's say, and, uh, and a number of parking deck and uh, motels and so on, with a bus station on this side and office space on top. This kind of compo should have direct light, you know, it's supposed to be an underground affair like uh, continuous underground affair like uh, Ville Marie and so uh, you know, uh, that should benefit of the daylight as much as possible. In fact, the idea of this connection <coughs> was to have a, an interior street where the, the north-south streets are sort of cubes, you see, which come across at a certain point where the bus stops and then you come down into this sort of galleria where the other station are on this side and the department store are on the other side so that they can benefit also of the exposure on the street. Uh, eventually, this big project for us only uh, produced a mouse, I mean a curtain. But, uh, and it's a small subway station, which is on 8th Street, in one of the connections of this project, which is facing on the other side of the street. But we have been enjoying very much, and unfortunately, this is only a model. I, I have pieces now ready for construction, and it consists in a simple glass protection of this uh, escalator. A lower, an open square into the level of the subway, and a series of projection in this wall, which would, where the city would uh, uh, hire uh, artists and, uh, to maintain a sort of continuous slide uh, projection work into that wall, and eventually will go down into the lower level of the <coughs> plaza over here. But the project was uh, very much, uh, uh, it was a, a really a, a fundamental experience for me because I felt open, a day I felt a great deal of uh, the necessity of the intention, put the, the intention on the right level in order to come to a possible structural answer as a physical result. Well, let me go through quickly uh, through a lost cause here, again, that, uh, <coughs> which was the uh, competition for the, uh, well, actually building for the American Institute of Architects. Uh, 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 the, the site uh, is this one, taken during the summer, but it, sh it shows uh, the, the amount of, of trees and vegetation along New York Avenue. And uh, there is a, the octagon is actually here. You can see it actually. It is all going in. And the present uh, office of the uh, there. As you know, there was a, a, a national competition. We, <coughs> we won it and by designing a building which tried to make of this corner of Washington, including the existing octagon here, which is a very wonderful kind of little building, actually not too little, that building designed by Torpen, which is the same man that uh, uh, actually won the competition, for it's always competition, uh, uh, won the competition for the uh, capital, the first building of the capital. And uh, what we tried to do really was, as I say, to make a, a place which could incorporate the old structure according to the program that the AIA had. Uh, the, the, in fact, the, the, our submission is out of this model, as indicated, where the, uh, 
building, the brick building here, is surrounded by a sort of stairy space, which is represented by this glass wall as a sort of diaphragm, and the rest are solid walls in masonry and concrete and brick, with, with a penetration into the office in this area. Uh, there is here a matter of principle, either you accept or not, but uh, our point was to incorporate the old structure into a new environment, so that, as you see from this plan on top, so that uh, the section of this wall was such that we had made a sort of central space. Uh, and we believe that if a structure is abandoned, I mean, it, it really the way to make the old structure, it is not a ras rationalization. I think it is some, you know, when you lose something, you start to always to rationalize. And, uh, you know, you rationalize your uh, uh, loss in a way, while you lose. But in effect, you know, many of these idioms in the past uh, 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 maintain a, a great strength in their con con continuity, I say, by not uh, uh, showing a false modesty, let's say, in face of the existing structure. <coughs> not making of them sort of the relics of the past, and the sort of piece of museum, brick plaque of the Victorian environment. But trying to, and Rome was done all in that way, and from London has been done in that way, by overlapping, there is no one building in Rome that is stylistically complete. They are all, they are all a, 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 a overimposition of all sorts of style within the same structure, which means, because the real purpose is not the one of making an abstract. As we believe that if a structure is abandoned, I mean, it, it really the way to make the old structure, it is not a ras rationalization. I think it is some, you know, when you lose something, you start to always to rationalize. And, uh, you know, you rationalize your uh, uh, loss in a way, while you lose. But in effect, you know, many of these idioms in the past uh, 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 maintain a, a great strength in their con con continuity, in sense, by not uh, uh, showing a false modesty, let's say, in face of the existing structure. <coughs> not making of them sort of the relics of the past, and the sort of piece of museum, brick plaque of the Victorian environment. But trying to, and Rome was done all in that way, for instance, London has been done in that way, by overlapping, there is no one building in Rome that is stylistically complete. They are all, they are all a, 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 a overimposition of all sorts of style within the same structure, which may, because the real purpose is not the one of making an abstract beauty, let's say, uh, like a pitch in the middle of a, of a, of a dish. So that is, uh, is only to make a place for life. You know, and, and where man could feel again at home in certain kind of knowing what he can do, what the past did, and so forth. And this is, uh, I can bring you hundreds of examples of this situation. Uh, I, I was brought up uh, in, uh, in, in Italy, you know, and during the fascist. And there the, the monument was always isolated, surrounded by trees. The great deal of work was done. And as a result, all the, the certain portion of the past became distorted in the view of the contemporary because we are encompassing in a certain particular position. We are isolated with certain kind of intent of mind, let's say, or showing the glory of Rome or showing that, you know, the, the power of the empire and the Colosseum is a big axis and so on. Well, in the past, the city wasn't at all in that particular way. Well, anyhow, uh, this is what we did as we extended our study later, and as the program of the building became large, 
but always the principle was the same. Then <coughs> those were a view of this major portion which enclosed this exhibit space, which were connect which was connected to the outside to this glass wall. And then within that there was a very complex uh, interior which produced all the various rooms, the, the various uh, <coughs> boardrooms inside into the thing. Here too, you can have a, a, a hint of what the problem was. The old, the, an existing building was acquired later, and obviously the problem was on how to maintain this old garden safe. So we had to produce all this drawing to show that we are setting back and setting back and setting back all the time far away from the uh, old uh, colonial guard, which is, uh, I mean, it's not colonial anymore. You know. There is no scene really to save. I mean, one of the uh, concerns was that we should save the scene. And uh, really, the scene is not there. It's all surrounded by car. One of, as we went along in this time, uh, as the, the solution that we have seen before was uh, rejected the first time, we went into other proposition, which was to set back, we understood that the problem was the fact that the whole building was too close to the garden, and therefore we tried to set back as much as possible deep into the carpet. And uh, try to do sketch to see again how the connection of that glass portion was into this continuous wall around. I think there are better. Uh, eventually, we arrived to this solution, which was the gun that, which frankly we felt much closer than any other, and that uh, we felt it had strong possibility. The idea now here, that particular side, instead of working in the periphery, we start to think that at the base we could work on the periphery of the side, so to leave the garden open as much as possible and maintain the continuity with the inside. And then as we were going up, we could straight this in one position, which was the uh, typical classical office space to be rented as a matter of as we were going up. These also guarantee a protection of the glass wall from the uh, uh, south, uh, so from the west exposure, and, uh, and we thought that uh, southwest exposure, so we thought that we could uh, uh, really encompass the solution of many of these problems. There was a connection between a major level of activity Below there are exhibit A on top, boardroom and conference room, uh, and then the various typical deck of the um, office. And then uh, an exit here into the garden and outside the street. The, <coughs> the section actually is most indicative. The idea was to get this space and carve really into the very guts of the building, you know, really until the end of the field. And in producing this section, it is always the line to the various floor on top, also by coming down here. Uh, well, those were a view of this proposal from showing uh, the masses of the street, which were considerable anyhow, and were producing an end in this particular condition. This was the bed, which uh, didn't have anything to do with just buried in an alley, but uh, somehow it indicates the organic aspect of the structure. Those were viewed from inside as you project uh, uh, into the garden and the, bed, the back of the octagon itself. This was the site from 18th Street. This point, this wall over here, is to maintain a certain, as we did without showing trees, which in effect really are so high over here. Uh, 
Uh, but this kind of wall, it, it's here to, to indicate, to retain, let's say, this kind of volume of space. And at the same time, not to let the building be a, an end in itself. You know, by all this kind of volumetric aspect, let's say, the building start to have implications with the outside. And it, I mean, it, sometimes one asks uh, why one uses uh, the 45 degree in the sharp corner and so on. Yeah, this is not a, a win all the time. It is, it is also a, a, a desire to extend the, 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 the dynamic, let's say, or to extend the, the, the quantities of the building surface into other things, into other spaces, so that you start to get other involvement outside. And always in this church, search really to uh, accomplish a major involvement of the structure of the other I mean, a, a building that is not finished formally in certain conditions. Well, this is the last solution that was rejected by the Art Commission. Can you lower a little bit, please? Uh, just to try. Right. Uh, that solution was uh, rejected by the Art Commission, and uh, and then uh, we went through. Uh, uh, on the other hand, that was what the program really, what the AI need in terms of its extension, and uh, we had a used program, so we designed a another building. I guess the fourth thing. Uh, now, in that case, having now a lower height, because uh, the area announces too much of the space inside, we have much lower building, and we went back to operate on the periphery of the site, leaving the garden as it is, it is opulous and surrounded by trees all around. And then we maintain the penetration from New York Avenue and the entrance this time over here. In order to reveal this entrance and to manifest clearly that, we decide to recess this, this building here. In other words, to terminate a <coughs> certain condition here and one there and have this point articulated, if you wish, or, or open in that way, to always be aware that that is the place where you come into. And not only that, but also because in plan, the building has a, a particular way of, you enter from here to here, and you walk through this staircase into this garden. And then you penetrate under this, on the area where the elevator are, and this, what was called a notch, was covered by glass. <coughs> On the second level, you see, uh, you could come in this bathroom where the exhibit, the major boardroom, and the other conference room were located. Uh, as you see, there is uh, an attempt here, again, to, and I, this is a formal situation, but it's very important. Uh, I mean, how do you change direction? So, as you move into the building, as things start to acquire an experience of this change, you change from one direction to another one, and how this could be accomplished. As you walk in this direction, you see, you have straight wall that you are facing for two of these stones. But then as you turn in, the building starts to acquire another direction, which is this one and that one. Actually, the next slides, I think they'll show you more. Eventually, you will start to have this typical floor space of an office distribution, let's say, and therefore from this direction of walking, you change in this one and that one. So we became fascinated with that aspect, and uh, we came up with this kind of solution, where there was always a strong, this time, the kind of stair going into this very dense box, and this uh, recess with a clear span given by structure window. Well, uh, I don't think that the Art Commission liked it very much, uh, uh, but we felt that at this point, 
we couldn't go along with the criticism. We went along with many of, of the other, as was the adoption of the program, and which the area uh, conference would say. Uh, the use of material, the use of, we had much simpler demonstration and much smaller kind of opening. But we couldn't go along with something that is uh, within the private property and, uh, and was a peculiar concern. They wanted to retire this, this element together, which will alter the philosophy of the whole thing. And so far, it has become a series of lead on top of something, and instead, by working in one direction, should change to another one. We decided that we, we, we wouldn't have any more uh, to work on this particular setup, as there is a limit, let's say, in which the, uh, where the Art Commission uh, operates. We are believed very much in Art Commission, and very much, not completely, but. <laughs> Forbidding the bad thing with past and uh, anyhow, and uh, actually, uh, if it is just an instrument of, uh, it, it starts to become an, a, 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 an instrument of, of, of order, which doesn't really. Uh, and the great architecture in this country really was always done where where information were not around. Anyway. <laughs> 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 this is a little too low. Okay, so you have to go a little higher. Can you lift a little bit? <clears throat> Uh, uh, why don't you put the next? Um, next, please. Uh, here is a project that uh, uh, we are involved now, and I'm sorry, I, I, show, I have only a few things to show to you because it's just in the process of making it. The problem is a, a high school for 3,000 children and uh, uh, in the middle of Philadelphia, in uh, Broad Street and Girard, in a place which uh, is surrounded by a residential area, close to Temple University on that side, and various other public spots here. Uh, this green is a greenway that uh, is one of the uh, the greenways are one of the petty uh, thing of the, I mean, uh, close thing of the Art Commission. They are all the cities. With this, you know, all the map shows greenways, and eventually they will be there, but for the moment, we have we to look for trees. That could be a pedestrian connection. Uh, and uh, at this point, we, we are assigned only with this kind of block. Uh, we, we try to make the school as possible as hard as we can. At one point, we presented a project where we had part of the school into the, uh, actually, into housing so that, for instance, a certain element of it, and uh, I would like to now be here to talk, he is an expert on the school. And, uh, and we'll be able probably to illustrate this principle to you much better than I could. Anyhow, what the struggle here, and that was the interesting aspect of this problem, of trying to separate the, the part, the certain meaningful part of the building, and work with them within certain aspect of the community itself. So that, for instance, the gymnasium was in relation to certain type of housing, classroom with a certain type of house and so on. Uh, we try also to maintain a commercial frontage in Broad Street. 
Uh, many of these attempts failed. So what remained, however, was the, the connection with the public park. So the, the old school sits now in a public park. This school is one of these modular uh, scheduling uh, uh, program where you know the classroom disappears. So actually, there are no classroom here. Uh, uh, it is based on this kind of uh, 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 having the program to maybe a certain number of years to this unit of 15 minutes so that he can uh, select his own kind of uh, uh, use of the time in a way. Uh, and so the school also is, is, uh, has, is called a magnet school. It is a school that has a focus on communication to attract students from other parts of town. There are fundamental, fundamentally three, four parts rather. A part which has a great deal to do with the city, a part that has, uh, uh, has to do uh, like auditorium and forum inside, we say. A part that has to do with the school and individual study, which is the most, where well, the most uh, humanistic type of study are uh, uh, there. And uh, a community area with restaurant, with uh, dining facilities, and a swimming pool and gymnasium connected with the park. So I think that inciting this kind of element, which will be built in by the period of time, we came with a, with a basic massive element, let's say, of this auditorium and uh, large uh, areas in connection with the street, the uh, areas of studies over here, the uh, dining, and in the middle of all that, all the resources where we are everything gravitate. Let's say from here and from this point. There are other areas for the uh, schools and the gymnasium over here, and all that is part of this path. This is the very, very beginning. A beginning that is indicated here by these spaces where the uh, children uh, go in terms of their own individual education, starting from the small team more group education with these larger squares, and larger assembly in this particular spot, as you see. So, well, as we found the rapport between these elements, when we found this, we had a, a never, there is a function which is relative to the rapport between the space and the use of space. And so there is another one which is relative to the structure and how the structure is served. So out of the over in position, let's say, of a certain structure of this function, we found out the building. I mean, we, uh, you know, it's, it's really, uh, I probably don't have enough descriptive elements, but you see the various scale, let's say, and core circulation and so on, where the result of certain structural relationships that are same, which are relative to that, which left intact the functional relationship between space. And, uh, and the old building came out, you know, we literally went and we worked with the community and the, the school people and, uh, and tried to see where the buyers thing were, what they needs, and how and what the approach was. And then we gave a physical structure to it by defining it, uh, the, the, the buyer's spot circulation <coughs> and so on. That means, for instance, that for instance, the theater assumes its form because here there is a penetration, and this is the part that is exposed to the street where the student union and all the bookshops and so on are literally in the street where the students will paint their own uh, walls outside and will take care. They will have the key and, uh, and that will operate also when the school doesn't work as an independent affair. But in the same time, it's part of the same structure. As well, the company, this is the pavilion for the band, and, uh, uh, which will march through the park and so on. But essentially, this is, I don't, can't go through into this too much. 
uh, as it is here in Calculi, that in principle, as developed as, as I explained to you, as I have expressed, there is one interesting point here, that is the individual study area, you see, where the lockers and the carrots, the dry and tube carrots, will be located. And there is where students spend about 30% of their time in any moment during the day. And uh, so the, the, the game is one of these spaces which are there on control <coughs> while their meeting is informal through these circles. Many, many places are formed by this kind of situation, the outside, inside, and in various forms. Uh, the architecture of places, let's say, become here you know, like this discussion about we don't want any more spaces, we want places. And this is true, but uh, and then uh, somebody will have to find the space for the places, but then it's not. Uh, <coughs> but the idea of places is, is, uh, is especially relevant when this school becomes so enormous, let's say, in number, in, in, in structure, which really means that, that, that a great number of groups are formed throughout the day. There is not, there is not, there is not, uh, there is not a bed in this school. Uh, you know, the, the thing will happen to, uh, I don't know, there are very few things that happen, I tell you, to you. So, uh, schools that are already operating uh, five, six schools throughout the country and even more and that, um, uh, is that uh, even more crowded? Uh, yeah. <coughs> this is this forum which which face the auditorium to the other side and it's a sort of general space where exhibit where the administration will be and some science classes are calculated. And those are some of the connections inside this part. <coughs> uh, this uh, shows more in detail the start with this uh, possibility that this kind of space could be uh, organized as one space into one direction or two different spaces. And here, you see, between the uh, level, there is an intermediate level, there is a split level here which gives the way to these tunnels, which are always possible to uh, see from, from these intermediate past. And here there will be seats, and this is not completed as design, there will be seats, the area for artworks which uh, will be placed into the wall in a very formal, informal way. In fact, we designed this temporary school for the United Nations in, uh, in uh, this is the United Nations school in New York. Uh, uh, is a is a tutorial school, sort of, uh, where we could uh, uh, make all sorts of experimentation, which are we are going to use both for this school as well as as for the future United Nations school that we are in for to design. Uh, this experimentation basically, uh, we had to deal with lost space, which we think we didn't have too much money, we fortunate, and it's always important, not to have money to spend. Uh, uh, to, uh, we paint each floor, we have huge loft space, we paint the wall of all the colors of the floor in different colors, white, yellow, blue, and red, and so on. So the one can recognize immediately where you are. We just bought a huge carpet all to paint the smooth uh, yellow color of red, and so on. And then we design a unit, which is this one, which has a blackboard, which is the only uh, <coughs> a, a surface to write, let's say, on one end and has uh, doors, panels, you see, which are hinged over here, and by forming a composition of the various panels, you can form a classroom of any size. Uh, well, you, you have the idea, I'm pretty sure you know, but, uh, well, you see here, some of the panels added, added here. This is another floor, the red one. 
which, uh, which eventually form this enclosure. There is no problem of acoustic, you know, they are always, these are five, five, six feet high. And uh, inside they contain either carrots or, or storage or, or seats. The, the students use it in the most uh, incredible way. It's, and sometimes they close the old thing in and they build a little room inside. But the acoustic is not a problem because the carpet takes take a great deal of the noise. And not only that, but they get used to, to maintain a tone of voice that is, makes understandable each other but don't bother the other groups. And it's very interesting how this thing runs spontaneously without the need of special regulation. <coughs> the only other addition were the graphic that we use throughout the school, which are quite, actually are super graphic, uh, all through. And, uh, <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> this is the blue floor, so you see some of these units produce this kind of, uh, they, only, they also can be slanted. <coughs> Uh, here you see the interior part. Before that, uh, all the uh, sun has things uh, wait. Uh, it's a model that you can just do out the old school anytime. Well, uh, we are also designing now the. I'm pretty close, I'm sorry. Uh, if you want, do you want to go ahead? Uh, yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> this is the U.S. Embassy for Bogota in Colombia. Uh, well, uh, again, this is uh, uh, you know, in South American country, and that is uh, this is we designed two buildings for that. The first project went very well until a uh, uh, certain uh, security regulation came up to the Saigon affair. And uh, so uh, we, had, uh, we had an approval, but then now we had to do some kind of other uh, revision of this project. The idea here, in a large lot, it was a, it's a square lot. <coughs> an approach from this side of the plaza and a sort of an interior space where two elements come together, let's say, in a sort of banded form to form this interior, interior avenue which had a connection outside. The idea was that, that was a major lower floor, a major, a major meeting place between the consular office on one end and the various office of the embassy still maintaining a degree of separation and security as such. The group of elevator was here, and then all the circulation was through this bathroom. The major problem, of course, I'm afraid you have to lift up, otherwise the uh, sky light. Uh, as you see, the approach from one end was over here, the entrance to the elevator element at this point, and uh, this is the portion of the band in terms of our. All that was. This building is surrounded by other buildings. There are tall buildings all around. The old structure was concrete, and that was the interior core. And uh, what was next, please? Uh, the upper part, you see, is solid. <laughs> I think you have to put again something. The upper part is solid as contains all the communication, uh, 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 the communication of uh, service, which is very classified. And, uh, but there is nothing mysterious about it. There uh, are room which has a. Uh, uh, it's really a, 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 a weird story, you know, it's really a James Bond kind of thing, because the, the wall of concrete uh, enclosed another room inside, which 
have uh, waves between walls, and uh, 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 elect electronic waves between the, uh, in the surface of the wall, so it could jam any kind of listening device that apparently it also had, which penetrates from a distance of a mile uh, uh, any, any, any depth of a concrete wall. So those are uh, three. Uh, but you have all sorts of stories of the, how the, the, the vetting system is done. So at one time, in one embassy, they found that, that they had, instead of four rods in the hall, they had five rods. And they are caught. There was a listening device that was inserted in the <laughs> <laughs> uh, So most, most of these happened during the I mean, all the danger, of course, the major of the of spine is uh, 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 done during, is done especially with the personnel. But there are cases in which you were in building is also uh, uh, in the building, I introduced listening device. Uh, well, this is, anyhow, those are not in the interest of architecture, but uh, this uh, uh, was the upper part more solid than the other with bottom and glass here, which has the office. So then uh, the, this is a view of the here, you see the various bottoms uh, up to the, where the light was penetrating from this side, and, and this was the council of weather uh, in our pieces with the USIS information as bookstores or with any book uh, shelves of that reaction. Uh, this is the view from the top where you have the very space. Actually, this building we, we really start to enjoy it very much the way it's, uh, it's this different stepping up, you see, toward this receiving element made so natural the space inside to separate these two wings with the way for the people to come from the bus straight up and the same entrance is for the uh, people using the consular office as well as the ambassador to design the uh, United Nations School uh, in conjunction with an apartment house uh, two types of apartment house actually, which will house the uh, employees of the United Nations in New York. This is very close to uh, the United Nations building over here, and is at the end of, of Tudor City, which is higher than the level of, 40, uh, of 39 and 40 Street over here. So we have about 40 feet of difference between this level and this level over here. This gave us the opportunity, let's say, of devising a number of levels between the two, which also include this complex, include the, the great, uh, the very large transformers station of Connecticut, a large parking garage, this school itself, and the apartment house. We try here to rent the building towards the better light, let's say, towards the south, here, so that the school and its palaces and various way of penetrating light into it could receive the benefit of this light. And those are fairly three story high buildings which uh, would be surrounding it in a sort of two parts. Um, so th those really don't belong. Well, this is a different building, something that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there is a small office building in Philadelphia where this time uh, we had the approval of the art commission. And uh, <laughs> on, uh, it's a building is basically a glass, you see, uh, how, see this could uh, uh, illustrate something that is uh, in relation of the separating the part of the building. The background is, is glass, it's all two, it's like a building in glass with columns set behind the glass wall. And then all the elements of masonry are applied in front 
to produce a protection on the west side here to this very narrow slot that is sort of, of uh, screen in front. Okay? And here we produce another alignment, let's say, on the direction of the path. Uh, this is straight glass, but there is always this uh, in this language, let's say, of elements which are applied on top of the basic structure, which in this case is glass. The structure being glass means that it is the real background of the building. But that uh, probably again is formerly this this can start to separate them. Uh, uh, in a way, I wouldn't like to use this word for a part because it's not very nice to say I'm building for a part. <laughs> but in effect, it's really uh, giving an emphasis to the thing that you need to make certain things work within this building. And but in say, not being overconscious and making a formal unit which in the past was very natural through the unity of style using a gothical uh, through or a renaissance of column and, uh, and uh, columns and so on and so forth. But here in the context of this small structure on the larger building, we have to somehow to find a different uh, kind of involvement of the larger parameter of the city with the building itself. Well, here comes back again to the man. And here, this building too, you see, uh, we could have done one side. This is uh, all regulated by very complicated kind of uh, FAR and all sorts of uh, Danish thing that the various uh, uh, <coughs> requirement of zoning and uh, setback and uh, complicated stuff, but you don't worry, you should uh, really don't worry for years. And uh, we all hope that sometime they will be. Uh, but anyhow, <laughs> uh, but there are always some clever people who want to make them complicated. But anyhow, the, the idea here, you have, there is a certain ratio between what you can cover and, or, and how you can do that. And the builder in New York knows very well all the trick in the, in, in, in the trade. And uh, the actors don't, so they're always uh, taken uh, in a bad way by the various scores that are on top of this thing. Uh, but here you can see on the level of Tudor C, which is a very interesting uh, setup, and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the development of the school on this area. And, uh, <coughs> This is in connection with the Ford Foundation, which is somewhere over here. And, uh, and uh, on the development that Kevin Roach is, is studying now. In fact, uh, we got this commission through the Kevin Roach signaling pass to this book, uh, to the United Nations. And, uh, and we decide, uh, again, we, we just. By separating these two wings, by creating this open, by having large terrace, that eventually will be connected with another building on top of the bus terminal here, with other stations and so on. That is why this is so plain, as you see. I mean, there are no designs for that there. But it is all an element of transition, let's say, between this part of the city where it's building being separated leave the possibility of establishing this spatial connection. This is, in fact, the view from to your city, where there are various levels of short service. On one end, the apartments, and on top, the school, which steps back, and where you can reach again the various uh, by uh, independently. Uh, actually, this is a section showing this side from uh, Tudor City um, with the various use of the space, the parking garage below here, the storage from the, the transformer are another position of the field, the which is level. The arrival to the school over here, the beginning of the level to the classroom, which, have, which as you see will be completely free deck, no separation, no room, no doors, nothing. It's always done 
with the same system that they use in these uh, uh, interim school, and uh, apparently they are very happy with it, and so there will be absolutely a clear floor with carpet and nothing else except this unique possibility to build inside whatever they feel fit for. On this, uh, this shows the complexity of the uh, growing up, let's say, to this level uh, through the parking garage underground. You see, and the, the transformer here, the school is on there, and the apartment uh, this is where we're uh, This is about the last one. These setbacks are setbacks that uh, eventually are given by the uh, regulation, the prior side of regulation, that, that we will try to interpret it, say, as all the buildings in New York have been interpreted for uh, many, many years. Fine. So I guess that, that's it. And uh, if you want to put questions, uh, if you want, go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.